What's up my friends, I'm Harv, I'm a video guy, however, I came from an audio background. I wanted an end game channel strip for all of my audio needs, and it had to be compact, sound really good, have EQ and really nice compression, and be built to a standard that would mean that it was going to last a lifetime. Enter the Heritage Audio. Brit strip. Usually I review things like cameras and lenses and video things, so when looking into this Brit strip, I noticed that on YouTube there are not very many good reviews. I mean, it's often just either a collection of clips, which is fine, you know, some sample audio, that's fine, or it's kind of an overproduced video from the manufacturer that just kind of waxes lyrical about vintage warmth and that kind of thing, or It'll be a review where someone just talks through the controls on the front and then the video ends. So I wanted this video to be a vastly more valuable review with a lot more kind of context and opinions on user experience as well as all the other things that I do in a review. Things like looking at build quality, the features, the value, uh, go through pros and cons and most importantly I obviously want to know if this is any good. Before I dive in, this channel now has a non-profit Patreon where any funds from Patreon I put back into the channel to buy gear to do unbiased reviews and then I give the gear away to my backers. If that's of interest, if you find this helpful, definitely check it out, it's linked below, it's just the cost of a cup of coffee. So, what is the Brit Strip? Well, the Brit Strip is a very faithful copy of Neve's 1073 preamp circuit with a really nice Neve based EQ section, and then a compressor which is the exact compressor, albeit mono, from Heritage Audio's successor compressor. The successor, by the way, is a kind of award winning and really heralded already. Uh, it's a compressor that's based around Neve's 2254 or the stereo 33609 compressors, which are just kind of legendary. I feel like I need a very quick preface about preamps. I am not a preamp guy. I've owned real Neve 1073s, API things, uh, and other one preamps based on them, even some cheap preamps. And whilst I'm not saying they do nothing to your sound, I just feel like your money is better spent elsewhere on things like I feel like microphones make a bigger difference. I feel like upgrading instruments or room acoustics really are make a far bigger difference and are a much better use of your cash. Understand that this is just the way that I feel about them. I just feel like this style of preamp don't represent good value for money and I think they're marketed in a bit of a brainwashy way. So my advice from experience is to try not to get sort of swept away in the, the kind of the promise of these preamps. You can quite easily get quite a bit of saturation from the Brit Strip. Uh, just crank the preamp and dial down the output a bit and pretty quickly it's sounding quite nasty. It, I'm not saying it's not appropriate for some things but you know it will affect things like the you know the dynamics of your audio. Maybe it will sound appropriate on something like a drum kit or if you want some sort of uh, crunchy room mic sound you can you can get that easily. But my advice is to keep the gain below about 60 dB, maybe even 55 uh, to, to kind of avoid that. Here's an example of low saturation, medium and then high saturation on something completely inappropriate, acoustic guitar. <laughs> So the preamp section of the Brit Strip, being a Neve 1073 based circuit, had no bearing on me purchasing this. However, the Neve EQ and Neve compression style really did, because I feel like they can shape your sound in a far more pleasing way than a preamp. I don't want to go through all of the, the front face and the specs and, and controls because chances are if you're watching this you already know what this thing can do. However, 
there are some cool features that I just want to highlight and I'm gonna cherry pick a few and show you them. Firstly, I already mentioned that the compressor in the Britstrip is based around the Heritage Audio successor. And this is a really big deal. You know, albeit it is a mono version, but that's a big deal. The successor is a phenomenal compressor. And in my opinion, this is the single best section of the Britstrip and um, I'd recommend people buy it on that alone. There are a few reasons for its awesomeness, and the first one being the diode bridge design of the compressor. Some call it, you know, the, the sound you get, they describe it as being buttery or creamy. There's definitely an, a dairy element to the sound. But the way I would probably describe it is it has a, a very harmonically rich tone. The compressor has a super cool sidechain where you can set it to bypass certain frequencies. Let's say you're recording bass guitar and you want to add compression, but you don't want to lose any of those sub frequencies. Well, just set the sidechain to 80 hertz and the compressor won't touch anything below that, leaving you with an extra fat sound. It also has a blend control, which is amazing. This lets you mix some of the uncompressed signal back in and is really good for keeping things sounding really nice and natural. This is something you'll see on software compressors, you know, plugins. So to see this on a hardware version, is just really forward thinking, really modern from Heritage Audio. So I really like using the blend for recording acoustic guitar. And that's just because I don't like to use heavy compression on acoustic guitar because usually more the more natural, the better. And this just lets you dial it in perfectly. Of course, the Brit Strip doesn't come with this beautiful housing. I got this from a UK seller on Etsy. It's made from solid dark oak and I love it. Fancy rack units like this deserve protecting and displaying with pride. So let's check out what you actually get. It comes in a box, Kel Surprise, and these are designed and made in Madrid, I believe. Simple packaging, it's gonna be a really simple unboxing. No instructions, don't need them. You can just look online if you need any help. We've got a plug with a kind of inline thing going on. This doesn't bother me, but I know some people are not a fan. First impressions, it's nice. It's, you know, nicely weighty, feels good in the hands. Here's a bit of film peeling porn for you. Isn't that so satisfying? On the rear, you can see we've got power output, line input, and mic input, as well as a side chain, sound and return, and you can actually link two of these units together to make a kind of stereo pair. How cool is that? It's quite a busy front face, but you know, it's all pretty standard. These push switches feel a little bit wobbly to me, but I'm sure they're fine in terms of quality. It's a lovely thing. It's very handsome. Next on to build quality, and what can I say? Very few corners have been cut. I, I love how solidly it feels. It feels solidly housed. I also love the quality of the paint job on the front. Oh, it's handmade, by the way. I didn't mention that. Yeah, it's handmade. And the knobs and dials all feel really nice to play with. I know audio guys like playing with knobs. The VU meter is dreamy to look at. It's clearly high quality and is nicely illuminated. However, I'm not such a fan of the feel of the push switches. They're okay, they're just, you know, a touch wobbly and have a slightly cheaper sounding click, subjectively of course. Moving on to the user interface and user experience of the Britstrip, and starting with the interface, the front panel, the front face of the unit, let's face it, it's um, it's busy. With so much crammed into one unit, there are a lot of dials to use, like lots of switches. You know, it's easy enough if you've used them before. You know, the, the trick really is to work left to right and, you know, just when in doubt, err on the side of subtlety. On occasion, it can be a bit tricky to kind of balance the, the right amount of saturation from the preamp with, you know, the output and makeup gain. But, you know, you'll get there. The thing to do is just to, you know, trust the VU meter, trust your ears. I find it is, you know, when you first get hold of it, it's, it's kind of, it's easy to get carried away and, and, and oversaturate things uh, and when you, you really shouldn't be. In fact, Heritage Audio themselves recommend adding maximum level to the output of the preamp section and having the, the, the gain itself on the minimum and just stepping it up until you get to the right level. And that's, there's a lot of sense there. Do that. Onto the user experience side of things. And in my experience, I found that it's pretty hard not to get a interesting, good sound out of the Brit Strip. You know, it seems like one way or another, no matter what you do, it sounds good. However, I'd say it's not very forgiving for guys who have maybe had less experience 
with EQ and compression because you know the front face is so busy there's so many dials that there's lots of abbreviations relating to compression and EQ but overall it's a joy to use and I'd say yes, you know, it's it can be on the fiddly side to dial things in, but, you know, that's a really enjoyable experience in itself. And, you know, at the end of the day, the sound quality, the results are the most important thing. So I want to show you now how it sounds. <laughs> Okay, so here we are. I've got a microphone set up. This is the AKG 414 XLS, and uh, it's about kind of maybe six inches away from me. It's um, it's closer than it looks on screen, and I'm not going through the Heritage Audio Brit Strip right now. I'm going through my SPL Crimson interface, through the stock preamps, just to see, kind of, uh, I guess, just to get a kind of a baseline to see what the, the sort of standard is. So now I'm going through the Brit Strip and I've disengaged any EQ and compression. So you're just hearing the preamp and um, I've set it fairly clean. So I don't think you're gonna hear masses of difference at this stage. So anyway, um, let's get on and get that EQ in and see what I can do. Cause I know I can get this sounding better. Okay, now I've kicked in the EQ and hopefully you're hearing a little difference. And all I've done is I've added a low cut at 50 hertz and then I've added a low peak a little bit at 60. So I'm actually just adding it in above that um, just subtly to, to add more uh, kind of depth, you know. With the mid range, I've actually scooped out a touch of the 7.2 kilohertz and that's quite a sibilant frequency for me so I've just used it to kind of take some of that out and then on the high frequencies I've actually added just a little bit of 16k shelf which kind of adds that sort of air and um, I love it through the headphones I, I love the way this sounds okay and now I've added compression it's not doing a lot to be fair it's just set at a two to one ratio um, fairly low threshold so it's just kind of taking off maybe one to two dB something like that but you know the the richness that it adds, I just love it. I've added the uh, decay at a fairly fairly fast rate, and I've, I'm using the normal attack mode. And what do you think? How does it sound? So from just preamp to adding EQ and then adding compression, man, it sounds fat. So get this: to buy the official Neve components that you get in the Brit Strip would cost you around £1,600 for the Neve 1073 SPX preamp and EQ unit and £1,900 for the 2254 compressor. The total before shipping costs is £3,500 and this combo takes up one extra rack space and of course one more wall wart. So now let's look at a couple of alternative options and we'll start with a route that I really did consider and that's the equivalent units from Warm Audio. Warm Audio do a 1073 preamp and EQ clone for around £800 and an LA2A compressor clone. Yes, I know it's not an equivalent compressor, but it's still very good. Again, 
that's £800, bringing the total to £1,600 for the pair. So the same price as the Britstrip, but takes up an extra two rack units and an extra wall plug. A budget option is the DBX 286S at just £160. I really did consider this, by all accounts, it's a pretty nifty unit. It's certainly a bargain and includes a preamp, EQ, a basic compressor, and a hardware DSer, which is really cool. But as I mentioned, I was looking for an end game channel strip that's compact, has EQ and compression, sounds really good, and is built to a high standard so that it lasts a lifetime. The 286S ticks a few of those boxes for sure, but not all of them. So I'm curious, which do you think is the kind of do it all end game channel strip? I'd love to know which ones you think in the comment section. There are plugins, of course, and I have used so many in my time. And um, whilst there are some good ones out there, to my ear anyway, they never sound as good as hardware. The other thing to consider is whenever you process audio with EQ and compression using plugins, there's inevitably a small amount of degradation. I'm really enjoying getting my audio sounding really good before it hits my digital conversion stage. That way, there's so little, if any, processing I have to do in the box, and you know, it's just gonna save me time and degrade my audio less. Next, onto the pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros, because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. Firstly, the pros, and the Brit Strip looks the business. Don't pretend you don't care about looks. Come on. Every time you look at the Brit Strip in your rack, you know you'll experience a little flutter of pride. It has first rate build quality and should last a lifetime. It's insanely compact to fit a Neve style preamp, EQ section and compressor in a one unit rack with no compromises is impressive. Subjectively, sound quality. Everything sounds bigger, fatter, and better, in my opinion, through the Brit Strip. This is the classiest EQ and compression I have ever heard. I can see why the Heritage Audio Successor compressor is so highly regarded. I'm gonna argue software versions do not compare to this. I've tried them, I've owned lots of them, and this just kills them. Onto the cons, and it is an expensive thing to buy. I don't think the value is kind of top notch compared to some of the alternatives I mentioned. I mean, it's great value compared to the genuine knee versions, of course, but seeing as they're going to sound the same as the Brit Strip, I'd say the knee versions are appalling value. Getting the most out of the Brit Strip requires either existing knowledge of EQ and compression or a willingness to tackle the steep learning curve. But once you do, Man, fiddly push switches, not a very big deal. I'm sure they are actually high quality and will still last a long time. This unit gets a bit noisy and hot sounding at anything kind of above 65 dB on the gain with audible breakup from the preamp section. To be clear, this is an authentic trait of this design. You just have to make sure you use the other output controls if you want a cleaner sound. There are only two settings for the attack time on the compressor, normal, and fast attack. Now that's fine for me, but for some people, I imagine they'd prefer more options. Finally, to my opinion, and as you can probably tell, I'm pretty over the moon with the Brit Strip. It's replacing my 500 series rack, which is based on warm audio preamps, and I, I can say there's there's no real comparison. Otherwise, I think my pros and cons nicely summed up my feelings on this product. So, buy the Brit Strip. If you're feeling flush, you are smart enough not to buy official Neve gear, and you want an end game channel strip that you can run things through the front end of your system and kind of bank on getting really positive results, improvements to your audio. Don't buy the Brit Strip if you think it's going to make up for the shortcomings of poor quality microphones. It won't. Also, just not because of the preamp section alone. You know my feelings on that. And honestly, I, I, my, it's my opinion that the EQ and compression sections of this device are, they are the most important and the, the most uh, interesting. They add the most interesting character to your sound. Forget the preamp. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. My questions of the day are this. Do you agree with me about preamps? 
you know, not, not the best use of cash. Which do you think is the best channel strip when you consider features, sound quality, and price value? Please load up the comment section and I will see you down there. I've now filmed hundreds of videos about audio and video, of which YouTube has recommended this one for you and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video.